Yo, what is up everyone and welcome back to another YouTube video with your host Ken Kukin and today we got another Destiny 2 raid video. This is a, a dummy proof video guys. Um, There's a lot of raid guides out there. I understand this is, you know, more for my community. If it gets more traction, that's great. So if you want to share, thumb up, let me know in the comment section below if it helps you out. Um, That would be greatly appreciated. But what we're going to do is I'm going to show you exactly what your role is in the raid for each role. So I've already come out with the other video, which is as a defender, kind of what you should be doing. Now, as the runner of the first encounter of the raid, we're going to go ahead and pick up there. So if you're confused on any of the topics that I cover or any of the callouts um, that I cover in this video, then you might want to go back and watch that first video. I explain a little bit more for that video. So as the runner... The encounter has started. Enemies are spawning. I kind of do the same thing until my name is called or until a call out is made. I'm just, I stick by my teammate or in the area of my teammate by my obelisk and my totem. I defend it. I kill ads and I'm waiting for my, my day to shine. So an image has popped up once again, let's, you know, real quick, an image has popped up. Now it doesn't have to be only the defender of the totem. An obelisk to make these call outs as the runner if you're in the area you're clearing ads your none of your doors has been called out for you to go in there's nine doors across the room with nine different symbols you're waiting for one of your three doors to be called out now as a defender you have three doors that you're going to kind of cover in your area if you see to the right of my screen you'll see knowledge and stop to the left off screen which I will point that out in a little bit later. There's going to be Grieve underneath. I think I actually go in that room, which is good, because you can see the difference of the sizes of these rooms here in just a minute. So Traveler showed up on ours. I called out Traveler. My teammate, you know, can call out Traveler. That just lets us know, once again, that, hey, there's a runner somewhere else on the Traveler side of the map that needs to go kill a knight, and when that knight dies, a room will spawn. The next image will spawn, which will indicate the room we go in. There it is. It's updating right there. Someone calls out what it is. I clearly don't run after it, so it's not one of my doors. Um, looks like we're going to go see what it is here in just a second. Someone does call out my door, so I don't even look. Someone says knowledge. All right, so I run into knowledge. Some of these rooms are very small. You you can see the whole room from the inside. You run back here. Two enemies are going to spawn up, glyph keepers. By the time I run into the room and right before they spawn, you can ask the person, hey, knowledge, is it light or dark, right? The third symbol on their totem, as, as you enter the room and you go further into the room, their totem will update and it'll either say light or dark. As soon as it says light or dark, these enemies start to spawn. Now, you can wait for the callout to happen, or you could just kill both of them and then wait for light or dark, and then uh, remember the symbol it shows. These two enemies don't overlap, like the one on the right is the dark one the one on the left is light they the light guy will not run to the dark side of the room and die and then his symbols will drop those symbols will always drop on the light side or the dark side no matter where you kill them you could push them out the room if you know you found a bug to do it you could push these guys out of the room kill them not know who died run back in the room and the symbols will be on the corresponding sides so they call out dark for me i believe and i just let dark have it now, try not to get shot from in front of you by the other guy, and apparently I let light guy have it too, because maybe I wasn't sure. Screeves on my radar are behind me. You'll see them as I run out of the room. I go ahead and blind them. It is light, so they call out light, but I kill both of them. Why it's important not to wait for light or dark to call out? If someone isn't giving you the call out, they're preoccupied, dead, can't see the totem, kill both of them. Killing the correct one resets the timer on the obelisk to give your team more time to continue with the gives your team more time to go into these rooms find out the correct symbol one of three symbols right and you need three so it's you know or one of two symbols in each room and you need three of the correct ones to proceed it gives your team time to complete the the phase or the whole encounter there's three phases you have to do or you have to you know or you're on the last one you're doing the uh, of the encounter so it's witness for me it's light i say all right it's witness I run out the room, I dodge the Screeves. Sorry, you didn't get to see them, but the Screeves will spawn in every single room you go in. Um, and I come back to my totem, um, and I kill ads until another room is called out, or we say, hey, we have all, oh, knowledge was on my totem. Or we say, hey, we have all of the, uh, we have all the symbols, I'm, you know, let's look at our obelisk, and we'll show that here in a second once again. I showed it in the other video, we'll show it in this one too. 
And I believe another call out's given where I need to go to another room. All right, they called out Grieve. This is where Grieve would be. It's underneath. This is one of the bigger rooms. It's probably one of the biggest. I don't think it gets bigger than the Grieve room. Um, And the enemy spawn. One to the left back here, which is light. And one to the right. They say um, left and dark. So they called out that I need to kill dark. I killed light because he spawned too close to me. Unfortunate for him. I looked at the symbol. It was the black garden symbol. You've seen the Screeves. I jumped over them. They always spawn at the doors. And look, I have to call out that the door needs to be open. So I'm just blinding Screeves until my door gets open. I'm not really killing them. And then I run out. So I now have two symbols. We have the witness and we have black garden. So someone somewhere else should have a door completed. And now we look at the obelisk. So I'm looking for all three of those symbols. I'm looking for the witness. I'm looking for... um. Black Garden, and whatever else was called out. Now, I don't know exactly what was called out. Guardian or Garden, one of those two. I notice that I don't have two of the three that I need, at least mine. I see I have Witness, but I didn't notice... Yeah, someone said Tower. I didn't notice the other one I needed. So I'm, I'm just kind of shooting. I'm waiting for the things to shift or for someone to call out. So I check another obelisk. I run over there as a runner. I already know some of the symbols. I know what I'm looking for. Even if I'm not sure what the call out is, I know what I'm looking for. And it doesn't look like I see it here. It was. Yeah, there we go. So witness and black garden were on that. And someone said it was also. Uh, something else. And then we run over to this totem. Now, as you see, the ritual has concluded. We've taken too long to complete it. So we didn't have all three images on the same obelisk. Um. So. It's important to, this is where, at least at this part, three people, it's easiest if three people know what symbols they're looking for. If one person knows, they would have to shoot all th three symbols by themselves. However, for that to work, the symbols have to be shot within like a few seconds of each other uh, at about the same time. No, no one side of the obelisk, all right, and we'll show the obelisk again here real quick. Um, when I look at the obelisk, I'm going to run over here. And we're going to look at this obelisk. This is, uh, you know, you're going to see where it succeeds. This side. So I'm looking at one side of the obelisk, right? This is one of the faces. There's three of them. There's only going to be one symbol on each side. One correct symbol on each side. So if I had to shoot all of the three symbols by myself, I would have to shoot two of them from an angle and then run to the other side. You know, slide and shoot as if I'm trying to slide snipe someone in PvP, which I can't do already. And hit the symbol on time for it to activate. So it's best if three people know what they're looking for, right? So again, learn these callouts, learn these symbols. They're very straightforward for the most part. Some of them, you know, you'll have your cheat sheet for. And everyone shoots the symbols at the same time, all right? You know, or somewhere close to the same time. You can continue to shoot it and shoot it and shoot it until in the bottom left of the corner, an obelisk accepts your offering. And you have completed that phase of the encounter. Now, you would do this two more times to successfully get through this part of the raid and move on to the next part of the raid. So that covers, if you haven't seen the first video, once again, link in the description below, or you'll see, you know, on top left or right screen, one of the clickable videos. One will go be to the defenders of the Vow of Disciple, and one will be towards probably the defender of the caretaker, right? And there'll be three parts to the caretaker. I'll cover all three parts. Once again, short videos, let me know in the Comment section below if this helps. Thumb it up. Share it with your friends if it's very simple and dummy proof. Um, and yeah, thank you for your time. And I'll see you guys soon.